Today I would like to look at fasting. It's found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verse 7. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh. God is talking here about fasting. When we think of fasting, we think abstinence from food, sometimes abstinence from water, which is really not healthy from water. We should drink water all the time. But it's okay to abstain from food if you want to fast. And it has a cleansing effect on our, and healing effect on our body. But this is not the fast that God is talking about here. As I read in this verse 7 of chapter 58, it says, Is it not to share your bread with the hungry? In other words, real fast that God accepts is when you and I take from that which normally would be for our consumption, whether it is for our food or for our clothing or for our house or for our car or for holidays or something that we would spend on ourselves. We would separate a portion of it and we would give it to help out the hungry and the needy. That is the fast that God says here he accepts. When we take care of the homeless, of the naked, of the hungry, that's the fast that God accepts in his sight. There are several promises that God promises in this word when we do that. One, in verse 8, then shall your light break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up speedily. Your healing will speed up quickly. You will become healthy. It's amazing. God connects our physical, spiritual, and emotional healing to us doing something for the needy, for the hungry, for the naked, for the homeless. God wants to cure our bodies when we do take care of those who are living in the fringe of society. Recently, I remember there was an opportunity for some ladies to make quilts and to donate to Shine Light Ministries so that we could give them to refugees in the Western Balkans. And one of the ladies had a stroke and she could not move her hand. But God encouraged her and says, you should join that group. You should start working on those quilts. And she did. She walked in obedience. She joined the women's group, started making those quilts. And as soon as she started making, God healed the effects, negative effects of that stroke. And she was able to work with her hand. God cured her. Another lady joined in that same group, and she was deep in depression. And God says, go, give of yourself. Help those needy people in the Balkans. And she did that. And as she came, she came out of depression, and she was able to smile and rejoice and have happiness in her heart and not live low in her spirit. When we do help others in need, God promises another promise here. In verse 9, then you shall call and the Lord will answer. And you shall cry, and he will say, here I am. In other words, God is going to answer you and my prayers. Maybe sometimes you pray, and, and you pray, and, and you pray, and you ask others to pray, and, and, and it looks like there is no answer coming. I remember in the book of Daniel, Daniel was praying for three weeks, 31 days, 21 days, and it seemed like there was no answer, but the angel was sent out as soon as he started praying. And those prayers helped him to overcome and come with a solution and with an answer. Maybe all you need to do if you want your prayers to be answered, of course, you and I have to pray. But maybe you have to consider first helping the poor, helping the hungry to eat, helping the naked to have clothes, and helping the homeless have a shelter. You know, that's what God says. Then, when you and I help, others in need. Then he will answer our prayers. Then shall your light rise in the darkness and your gloom be as the noonday. And the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your desire in scorched places and make your bones 
strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. God says here that He is going to guide you continually. He promises that He will direct you in your life. Maybe you don't know what to do. There is a decision that you need to make. And you don't know what choice to make. You have to choose for a career. You have to choose for a spouse. You have to choose for a change of career, not just to study, but change of what you have to do. Maybe a house purchase, a vehicle purchase, or whatever. Whether you should start this or start that or do this or don't do that. And you don't know what you are supposed to do, what choice you are to make. It says here in the Word of God, when you and I help the poor, when you and I help the hungry to eat, when we help the homeless to have a home, when we help the naked to have clothes, then God will guide us continually. You know, God does not want to answer our prayers just for our selfish purposes. It says here, when you and I divide up from that which is rightfully ours, which we would usually consume for ourselves, whether in terms of food, whether in terms of clothing, furniture, vehicle, holidays, whatever, even future investments. God wants us from that to divide up and give for the kingdom of God so that we can help others, not only to be helped on a humanitarian level, but also to hear the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ so that they will know God loves them. Actually, when you read in, in 1 John chapter 3, verse 17, but if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? And then verse 18, little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. God wants us to express love in tangible ways to help people at the point of their need. And if it is food they need, shelter they need, or clothing, and we are able to do it, or we divide up from that which is rightfully ours, like it says in Isaiah, and give it to them and help them a little bit or much, whatever God, how He prompts our heart, He promises He's going to heal our body. He promises He's going to answer our prayers. He promises He's going to give us guidance in our lives. We are going to be able to, and we are going to know what we are to do in our lives. So I want to encourage you. Have you considered fast that God considers as a fast, true fast? In God's sight, it is helping the hungry, it is helping the homeless, and it is helping the naked. What are you going to do? This is the Word of God. I didn't say it. I didn't invent this. God did. And His Word is truth. When you and I walk in obedience to the Word of God, we walk in blessing of God in our lives. So please, walk in the blessing of God in your life. Walk in obedience to His Word.